For some reason, I thought that it would be really funny to make a dedicated chart of everyone who has ever hooked up with each other in Marvel Comics. And now, it has turned into a really weird part of my life. I have made several videos about Marvel characters who have banged each other, and y'all apparently want more. So, okay, let's talk about Black Widow's romantic history. But here's the thing, this video should have been quick and easy to make. It was not. See, if you're only familiar with her character from the movies, then you might be surprised to know that Black Widow has one of the most complicated histories in all of Marvel Comics, because she has been changed around a whole heck of a lot. For example, you know her iconic backstory about being raised in the Soviet Red Room? Yeah, despite being first introduced in 1964, that wasn't made a thing until 1999. Also, Natasha was born before World War II, but she doesn't really age because she was given a modified version of the Super Soldier Serum. On top of that, because she's a spy, there's many different stories about her history, and what's true and not true is up for debate. But after reading through so many Black Widow comics and after a ton of coffee, I think that I have finally done what y'all have asked for. Hello and welcome to Comic Drake, where I talk about comic books and my name is Drake. Let's talk about the complicated ass love life of Black Widow. But before we get too far into things, I need to give a quick thank you to the sponsor that has consistently decided to fund my weird research into subjects like these, Manscaped. My girlfriend loves that I'm hygienic, and let me tell you, people are a lot more interested in getting intimate with you if you're not completely disgusting down there. Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0 bundle has everything that you need to be as appealing as possible, including the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, which is convenient with its wireless charger and replaceable ceramic blades, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant to keep you smelling well all day, and the Crop Reviver for when you need a little bit of freshening up. The bundle even comes with the new Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Trimmer, which is really nice since, like, in the past couple of years, I've been having to deal with my nose hair getting long. If you get the Performance Package 4.0, then you'll also get this really classy travel bag and a free pair of anti-chafing boxer briefs. And let me tell you, they feel good. I'm wearing them right now, and they're pretty nice. Seriously, do yourself and anyone that you want to sleep with a favor and grab one of these for yourself at manscaped.com. And if you use the code COMICD at checkout, you will get 20% off your order and free international shipping. Thank you very much to Manscaped for sponsoring the video, but now, let's get back to it. Now, just to make things clear, Natasha has seduced countless men over the years as a part of being a spy, but they're usually nameless and or one-off dudes. For this video, I am only talking about her notable partners. So let's start off with Natasha's first love, a man named Nikolai. These two were just kids when they were in the army together, Natasha barely being 16 and Nikolai being 17. They weren't able to officially get married and he couldn't give her a proper ring, so instead Nikolai wrapped a ribbon that his mother had given him around Natasha's finger and they exchanged their vows. Natasha became pregnant during the war, and despite trying their best to stay safe and healthy, their daughter died during childbirth. Nikolai then died shortly thereafter, and that's really all that we know about him. He was only mentioned in a flashback in a super short story, but given her desire to be a mother, especially since the Red Room later sterilized her, you would think that being pregnant a lifetime ago would be mentioned more often. But then there's the Red Room. Natasha had many teachers in this institution, including Wolverine and Bucky Barnes, who at the time was brainwashed by the Soviets into being their assassin, the Winter Soldier. Despite it being very much not okay to fraternize, Natasha and Bucky had a passionate fling that they managed to keep a secret from their superiors. But also around this time, Natasha was arranged to marry a Soviet test pilot named Alexei Chostakov as a part of her cover identity. Although she did develop feelings for Alexei, Natasha continued to see Bucky in secret. But tragedy struck when Alexei died in an explosion while testing an experimental rocket, and Natasha was stricken with grief. In reality, the explosion was staged by the Russian government, and Alexei's death was faked so that he could become the newest Red Guardian, the country's answer to Captain America. After becoming a literal widow for a second time, Natasha threw herself further into her work. Her new mission? Get close to weapons dealer Tony Stark, steal his secrets, and kill Anton Vanko, a Russian inventor who made his own power armor, took up the name Crimson Dynamo, and later defected to work for America. The mission was actually Black Widow's first appearance in the comics, as she was originally made to be an Iron Man villain. Natasha was instantly attracted to Stark during the mission briefing, and she was more than eager to put the moves on him. But although Black Widow and her partner were successful in killing the Crimson Dynamo, the mission was still ultimately deemed to be a failure, and her identity as a spy was exposed to the American public. Worried about the punishment for botching the mission, Natasha laid low in America. 
That is, until she found out about a new anti-gravity device that Stark had made, which she decided to steal from Mother Russia. Now, here's the thing about Tony Stark. This dude is horny as hell. So even though she was responsible for the death of his colleague, lied and stole from him, tried to kill him as Iron Man, and is a literal enemy spy, all Natasha had to do was call Tony up, and he was happy to let her back into his life and show off his new technology. And let me make something very clear. There was barely any time between these two missions, with it happening in back-to-back -back issues, and it being explicitly mentioned in the comics that these only happened a month apart from each other. I still have grudges about bad dates that happened, like, three years ago. So for Tony to forgive all of that that quickly, damn. Well, surprise, surprise. Black Widow duped Stark, stole the anti-gravity machine, and wrecked havoc with it. But thankfully, Tony was able to slip into his Iron Man persona and depower the device while Natasha got away. Black Widow was determined to get her revenge on Iron Man, and luckily she discovered someone with similar goals. Jealous of all the attention that Iron Man was getting, a carnival archer named Clint Barton decided to become a vigilante and put his skills to the test as Hawkeye. On his first night out, Clint tried to stop a jewelry store robbery, but the cops mistakenly thought that it was Hawkeye who was actually the thief, and obviously not wanting to go to prison, he ran. While on the run, Hawkeye was discovered and picked up by Black Widow, who seduced him and convinced Clint to join her in her crusade against Iron Man. The two tried their best to take the Armored Avenger down, but were foiled time and time again. And it got to the point where Hawkeye got tired of living a life of crime and instead decided to join the Avengers. Now, Natasha was still under her Soviet brainwashing, but thanks to the power of her love for Clint, she was able to overcome it and become a good guy permanently. Although she didn't become an Avenger herself, Natasha acted as a vigilante on her own and occasionally helped out the team, which is how she came face to face with the Red Guardian, who revealed his identity as her thought-to-be-deceased husband. But shortly after this reveal, Alexei was killed by his partner in crime, which only threw Black Widow deeper into her relationship with Hawkeye. Despite it being a monumentally huge part of her life, Clint and Natasha's romance was pretty short-lived, since she wanted to abandon the superhero lifestyle in favor of being a socialite. But she also knew that Hawkeye really wanted to be a hero, and since she was worried that he would quit for her, she dumped him. But here's the thing, Natasha almost instantly got bored of her new life and became Black Widow once again. But she didn't go back to Clint. To add insult to injury, she was dating around, so it's not like she just wanted to be single for a little bit. Like, dude, if the real problem is just that you weren't satisfied with your boyfriend, then at least be honest with him about it. One of the new men in Black Widow's life was Daredevil, since she kind of just came upon him one day and decided to stick around for some team-ups. During one of their fights with the villainous Scorpion, Natasha seemingly killed the dude and was arrested. Now, the Scorpion that they fought was actually a robotic doppelganger, because comics. So Daredevil assumed his alter ego of lawyer Matt Murdock represented Natasha at the trial and won her freedom. Afterwards, Natasha met a doctor that claimed that he had the cure for blindness. So, partly to repay him for winning the trial, and also because she had the hots for him, Black Widow invited Matt over to have the operation, and they hooked up. Okay, so this doctor was also just a robot because comics, and it turns out that this whole thing was a setup for him to end Matt's career as Daredevil. Widow was able to put two and two together that Matt was the man without fear, they defeat the robot, and it looks like they're going to start dating, but then an extremely unrealistic set of circumstances pops up. When the two of them returned to New York, Matt and Natasha bumped into his ex at the airport, Karen Page, who was there with her new boyfriend, who had literally just proposed to Karen on the taxi ride over. On first sight, or at least in Matt's case, first radar sense, he and Karen ditched their partners and started making out in the middle of the airport, right in front of their lovers they abandoned. Oh, they also got immediately engaged too. They broke up just one issue later, and for some reason, Natasha lets Matt back into her life, and the two of them moved to San Francisco together. This new relationship was intense, and was a huge part of both of the characters' lives. The Daredevil comic was even renamed to Daredevil and the Black Widow for a while. Yet, this honeymoon phase was met with challenge when Natasha's old beau came to town. Yeah, Hawkeye decided that he wanted Black Widow back, so he poured out his heart and soul to her, but she was all like, dude, go away, I'm with Daredevil now. Like many a dumbass, Hawkeye persisted even after being explicitly told that she had a boyfriend, and it got to the point where he and Daredevil had to get into a fight, which ended when the Avengers showed up to break it up. Well, I mean, they showed up to recruit everyone to help them fight Magneto, but they also broke up the fight. At the end of this mission, the Avengers invited both Matt and Natasha to join the team, and although Black Widow accepted, Daredevil did not. 
Now, even though Natasha quit the team just one issue later, this was kind of the beginning to the end of her relationship with Matt. You see, this group dynamic partly opened Black Widow's eyes to the fact that she really wanted to work solo again, which caused her to break up with Matt and move to Los Angeles where she could strike it out on her own. But hey, remember how Natasha broke up with Hawkeye because she didn't want to be a superhero anymore, then immediately got bored, became a superhero again, and didn't take him back? Well, she kind of did that shit again. See, even though the entire reason that she dumped Daredevil and moved to LA was because she wanted to work alone, she bumped into a bunch of other superheroes through circumstance, and they formed a team called the Champions, which Black Widow actually became the leader of. She also developed a relationship with her teammate, Hercules, but it was never actually shown within the Champions comic. All that we ever really got to see of the relationship was the two of them bickering in a crossover with the Avengers, and it being confirmed later that they were dating that entire time. When the team disbanded, Hercules decided that he wanted to see more of the mortal world, and Natasha decided to go with him. The two of them were hanging out with the Avengers, and then Daredevil showed up. Natasha wasted no time kissing Matt without his consent, right in front of her. Daredevil wasn't interested since he was currently dating a woman named Heather, and Hercules was naturally pretty hurt, so he stormed off, and that ended his relationship with Black Widow. Not taking the hint, Natasha hung out in the Daredevil books for quite a while, still trying to pursue Matt. She even played a huge role in breaking up him and Heather by forging breakup letters for the two of them. I mean, granted Matt was being manipulative as fuck since he systematically destroyed Heather's life and career so that she would become codependent on him and feel pressured into getting engaged. Don't get me wrong, Everyone is an asshole here, but you can't tell me that Natasha didn't have ulterior motives as well. But alas, Daredevil and Black Widow were never a couple again, so all of that was kind of for nothing. Also, don't feel too bad about Heather. She started dating a bad guy and told him Matt's secret identity, so again, everyone is an asshole. That brings us to the 90s, where surprisingly there wasn't a whole lot going on in Natasha's love life. You would think that in an era defined by sexy women doing sexy stuff, that Black Widow would be front and center. But it looks like she was just honestly really busy running the Avengers since she became the team's leader. I mean, she was sort of seeing Iron Man again for a little bit, but that was more like just a team up and not a romantic fling. She then got wrapped up back in Daredevil's life when he was being tormented by Mysterio, which resulted in Natasha pouring out her feelings for Matt, who then proceeded to beat her up so that he could take a baby from her that he was maybe going to kill since it could be the Antichrist. Okay, so I know that's one of the most because comics things out there, but I swear to God, that storyline is honestly really good and one of my favorite Daredevil books of all time. When the Winter Soldier broke free from Soviet control and took over as Captain America after Steve was killed, he and Black Widow picked up the relationship back where it left off all those decades ago. This was a cute-ass pairing, and the two of them fit each other so well. It was also the healthiest and longest-running relationship that Natasha has ever had. That's why it was so surprising that she randomly decided to kiss Hawkeye, even though both of them were seeing people at the time. Thankfully, this was a plot point that went nowhere and wasn't mentioned again, so I'm just going to chalk that up to bad writing. Bendis. Outside of that slight road bump, the Bucky-Natasha train showed no sign of slowing down. That is, until she was kidnapped and brought back to her Soviet state for a little bit. Unfortunately, when she was brought back to normal and got her memories back, her ones about the time with Bucky were the only memories that didn't return. Still having feelings for her, the Winter Soldier continued to look out for Natasha as her guardian angel, and he helped truly get back all of her memories. But there was no time to dwell on that, because the world was suddenly rocked when an evil version of Captain America took over the United States in the name of Hydra, and the heroes of America were scattered, imprisoned, or killed. Running the Resistance group was Black Widow and Hawkeye, which brought the two of them back together. Until she was killed by Hydra Cap. She got better though, and she came back to life after Hydra Cap was defeated, and things returned to… whatever the hell normal is in the Marvel Universe. That all brings us to the most recent book at the time of this recording. A group of villains kidnapped Natasha, and some random guy. They rewrote their memories and gave them the perfect life, thinking that if she was happy, then it would prevent Black Widow from working and killing them. Now, Natasha is an amazing architect, makes crazy good money, and the bad guys even combined the DNA of her and her fake fiancé to make them an adorable kid. Naturally, the folks in Natasha's friend circle are a bunch of superheroes and secret agents, so they were able to track her down, and when they saw that she was legitimately happy, they were on the fence about breaking her out of this new life. 
but things changed when the villains saw these heroes snooping as usual and got worried that Natasha's friends would restore her memories, so they decided to just kill her instead. But in the process, they did the exact opposite. With the help of her friends, Black Widow was able to take down the villains and get her fake fiancé and her son put into witness protection, presumably to never be seen again. Hopefully you now understand why this video was so difficult to make, because since Black Widow's life is so defined by her relationships, you essentially need to know her entire history to talk about them. And I hope I made it make at least a little bit of sense. And if I did a good job, well then, good news, this channel is chock full of videos where I hopefully explain comics that well too. So maybe consider subscribing or even watching another video. Like maybe check out the video that I did on Vision's love life. You wouldn't know by looking at him, but his romantic history is very robust. That video was bonkers and a lot of fun to make, so maybe consider checking it out. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.